Today it finally warmed up enough outside where I can work outside without wearing gloves. And I want to get this solar panel installed. The mount I got is so that it can tip up. It's one I ordered online and this is the third one I've done this way and I'm going to show you what I've done before and what we're going to end up doing with this one. Well, the panel that I bought is a 200 watt made by New Power, and uh, I've got a Renogy 30 amp MPP controller to put on it. The first panel I received was broken. It was just shattered, so I had to wait to get another one. Hard to ship these things, so yeah, that's to be expected, I guess. The tilt brackets that I'm using are made by Link Solar. And like I say, I've used these twice before. This is my third time. And I, I find it to be really strong. Whether they're the most convenient, I don't know. I'd like to have something where I just push a button, but that ain't going to happen. I figure most of the time, uh, the panel's going to be down laying flat anyway. And just when we're parked somewhere for an extended period of time, uh, we'll go up and tilt the panels. And the brackets that I'm using are uh, pretty heavy duty aluminum angle, all drilled and everything. Comes with all the necessary hard, hardware for making it tilt, including the uh, bolts to uh, bolt the brackets to the panel itself. Of course, the hardest thing to figure out is where to drill. Through carefully locating the, what I think is the center of the frame or the beams that go this way and lining up those screw holes and measuring on the inside, measuring on the outside, coming down here, putting a mark, bringing that mark around to the outside and going up. I've determined where I think the center of those frames are at. And then I had to do the same thing back here too. Very careful measuring, trying to determine that. And hopefully these are in the center of those frames and bringing the mark around to the outside, carrying it up, and using a square to go across. You can kind of tell by pushing a little bit when you're on something solid, but you're not gonna know until you drill it. I did the same thing across the back and the frame just happened to line up with these screws on the side here. follow it out there as close as I can tell. But what happens when these frames don't line up with your solar panel? Now just by luck, and I mean this is just by luck, the measurements of this solar panel, the ends of it line up exactly with the center of these frames. So I'm going to be able to bolt directly to the frames. And you always want to bolt directly to or through the frames. But what happens if your solar panel doesn't line up correctly? I'll, have to, I'll show you how we do that. So if you need to mount these aluminum angles somewhere other than the very ends, you're going to need to go down to the hardware store and buy some, oh, probably, probably two inch aluminum angle to go from one side to the other side to mount this bracket to. And because aluminum is so easy to work with, that's really not a problem. Uh, usually your local Ace hardware carries two foot and four foot lengths of two inch aluminum angle. You can get it from them or Home Depot would have it. So it's, it's not a bad deal, but that'll make it so you can through bolt directly through those uh, frames going across the roof of your trailer and make it strong, as strong as you can get it. Because you don't want to bolt just to the sheet metal. That sheet metal will vibrate and work hardened and pretty soon it'll uh, you'll have leaks up there where it develops cracks.
Wish me luck. <laughs> well, that felt pretty good. I could feel it going right through the beam. Good. Measurements paid off, luckily. This is the sealant I'm going to use to seal that solar panel. Sikaflex 221. It's a polyurethane sealant. I've used it for many years. I used to use it on doing boat repair. The two I always used was either the 221 or the 241. Uh, I would have used the 241 on this job, but uh, it was 35 bucks a tube. <laughs> and this was like 12, including delivery. So, but the only difference is the 221 is an overnight cure, and the 241 will cure in about an hour and a half or two hours, so you don't have as long working time. Now, this stuff is so tough that if you get it on your skin, you got to wear it off. Literally, you can't get it off. Um, it comes off with acetone, but this is tough stuff, and whatever you put it on, it sticks to and it stays stuck to. So, I don't know if you've never used it. This is, this is a good sealant. I forgot I made these so they would go from the underside up because with, with only six feet of headroom inside that trailer, I didn't want a hex head sticking down underneath. So I decided to go with a round head instead. Now I need to go underneath and push these up from underneath. And I also am using a large flat washer so it doesn't, so it doesn't squeeze that aluminum frame uh, too bad. Well, the only product that comes close to this is uh, 3M 5200, which you can find in the small tubes in the hardware store for about eight or nine dollars. <laughs> but uh, this is every bit, and this is the same stuff. They're both polyurethanes. There's nothing else in the hardware store that compares to this when it comes to being an adhesive and a sealant. It doesn't let go of anything. Yeah. Once it goes down, it's down. It's at 3M double-sided tape. I'm gonna put caulking around it anyway. Had a little trouble getting this in there, but 
it's down and it's sealed. I mean, where the wires go through the roof, it's sealed. I'm gonna put some sealant around the edge of this too. Oh, it leaks. Now these are the two struts that hold that panel in an angled position and they just come off. They have these uh, um, two knurled bolts on them with the wing nuts and they just come off. You just store them inside. And when you put your panel up, you just go undo the other two knurled nuts up there, knurled bolts, and uh, you just uh, use those on the bottom side of these. And that's the way you do it. Now Hobotech had a um, video out where they replaced these with a pair of those gas shocks like you use to hold up the rear deck lid of your SUV or something like that. And you just buy those at the auto parts store and I'm going to look into that because that sure looks slick. So I'll, we'll see if that can work too. But in the meantime, these aren't hard to use. You tilt it up and you put it in. It takes you a couple of minutes. and. And like I say, I wouldn't be tilting that panel up unless I was going to be in a spot for a few days or something. But so many different things you can do. Well, I'm just adding the final touches on this solar panel. It's all installed. It's all working. I wanted to talk to you about where to mount these brackets on here. And the fact that I lucked out in the ends of this panel just perfectly lined up with the frames, the roof framing in my trailer, but it may not end up that way for you. And I wanted to tell you what else you can do. Um, I mentioned that you can put aluminum angle iron bigger than this, you know, but, and, and put it across your panel, wherever your framing happens to be. But there's a problem with, there could be a problem with drilling this panel. Like I drilled this one and most people do, but I've also heard that that can void your warranty on these panels. Well, there is one other thing you can do and that's to use Z-clips. And Z-clips are designed to go in the holes that are already drilled in your panel. And, and they would provide something that you could attach that aluminum to, the aluminum angle, so that you can put on this tilting mechanism here like I've got so I think that's a that's a good option for you if you're afraid about afraid of avoiding your warranty you could use z-clips and mount these somewhere somewhere different what I've got to put on here today is a inline mc4 connector fuse and diode Simple as that. I'm going to neaten up these wires a little bit, then I'm done on the roof. Anything that I'm using here, you'll see in the video description right down below. We've got this nice warm day today. <laughs> it's beautiful out, getting up to 62. And starting tomorrow evening, we're supposed to get up to eight inches of snow again. Darn. There we go. Catch a little sun, shed a little snow. Well, I'm pretty happy with it. It's probably got some bugs that need worked out. I don't know. I need to put a couple of decent batteries in the trailer yet. Anyways, I hope you got something out of this video. And if you did, please like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you around.